Okay, I think we're on video number four for Twin Motion. So if you haven't watched the previous videos, please go check them out on my channel in this playlist for Twin Motion. And what we've done here is we've taken a model from Chief Architect, we've imported it into Twin Motion, and we're slowly working through it and trying to make it look realistic. So what we're going to be focused on today is this driveway. I just want to spend a, a you know, real short amount of time on this driveway and kind of detail this guy out. The first thing I want to do is let's just take a look at some of the materials that are available to us and I'm gonna go into ground and our man-made section here and we've got a couple different like cobblestones. We've got this concrete road. Let's check out the old cobblestone. Smooth cobblestone. Yeah, we've got the wave cobblestone. All pretty cool. Maybe we'll stick with you know kind of this older looking or I don't know let's check out all these I like the smooth cobblestone so already off the bat we can see one thing is that the scale of this cobblestone is a little off so I mean we have a sub menu here um, for this material we can increase this scale exponentially just immediately with just a drag of this obviously if you just click on the number itself you can designate your own scale if you know what you're looking for um, at this scale we're starting to see some detail that I really like some breaks in this here yeah it looks pretty good um, so a bigger part of this video is that we're gonna look at some of uh, twin motions decals which is an awesome awesome feature so under materials excuse me under ooh, objects there we go so under objects we've got this right here which is decals and you can see as I bring this out into the model space it's creating look at that zebra crossing US style crossing you can get these layered on top of each other. You can scale them. You can do a couple different things to them. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is, well, we'll put some cracking in this driveway. And we're just going to work through this until it starts looking good. So I'm going to scroll way down because I know that I've got road damage way down here. And I'm going to kind of put it next to, I don't know, kind of the end here. And you'll see one thing that's happening right away and we'll address this right now is that this road cracking is not bound to the item that we've seemed to have isolated right and so let's first thought would be what if we isolate the selection can we get rid of it then let's go over to a scene graph and if you're unfamiliar chief architect any other software it always has some version of this um, some version of, of a graph or a hierarchy or you know just it's a project browser some version of your project that you can go in and isolate selections so I'm gonna delete this guy right here and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna select this roadway and I'm gonna isolate that selection now we've got it isolated let's see what happens if we bring the road damage in now let's see if it changes anything here so go back to the scene graph and exit isolate selection look what happened it's still carried over to this so it's not a true isolate selection what a shame twin motion please feature request so to get around this I'm gonna do what this offset right here and I'm not gonna get into the minutiae of what exactly this does it's basically changing oh it's not really changing the bounds for the purpose of this video let's just say it's changing the bounds of that decal so if I change it to one you can see immediately that it's essentially like changing the grip at what it's um, at what it's being dropped onto so there we go we've seemed to have isolated that cracking just to where we want it to be um, next thing is we've got a bunch of different patches and and leaking water etc that we can do we can do this along this area here and uh, along this area here and and then oh wait what if I want to do it four more or five more times well Let's think about that. Why can't we do it four or five more times? So let's go over to the scene graph. I'm gonna select this first one here and I had to hit a bunch of buttons to figure this out and I believe it was, well, it's not Alt because as I hit Alt, it doesn't do anything. So we hit Shift, we drag it over to where we want it to be and it gives us this option, instance, copy, number, spacing. And to understand this, you really need to understand what an instance is. 
if you're familiar with SketchUp, you know that if you create a component and then duplicate that component, any edit to either component carries over to its duplicate component because it is an instance. Same thing goes here. This is an instance of this first decal that we created. If we edit the first decal, it is going to edit the second decal as well, so long as it is an instance and not a copy. Um, for the purpose of this, let's just make this guy a copy and we're gonna make, oh, I don't know, like five of these, sure. And we're gonna see what happens. What it's gonna do is it's gonna duplicate it along this line. Now, granted, our draw distance right now in, our, in my settings in Twin Motion, in my preferences, under quality, I've got it set to ultra. It's as far of a draws distance as I can get. So as we get closer to these decals, they should show up, right? Wrong. The reason being is that we are not quite in plane. We've got this terrain is actually sloping up. So what happened there was that it instanced it along an axis and now they've all disappeared. So not a perfect tool. It'd be nice to be bound towards um, this road marker so that I didn't have to go through and place these one by one. So let's get back to this first one here and I wanted to show what I'm doing um, to this first guy, this first instance of this and sometimes it's very difficult to select these decals so please don't forget you've got your scene graph and you need to organize your scene graph to be able to understand how to locate these items. So here you go and one thing I'm going to do right off the bat is I'm just going to set the opacity to barely be visible. Same thing with this other leaking water or maybe I crank it all the way up, who knows, but I'm just going to barely put it on there and let's get back into our objects and decals. Take a look at some of the other decals we've got here. We've got some various stains we can do, you know, just kind of trying to make this roadway feel a little bit more realistic. This stain, um, you know, I know I want to have a little bit more opacity. It almost looks like we've got some kind of a road leak going on. Let's change to our uh, scale tool, which I think is number six on the keyboard. It is. And actually, we don't use the scale tool. We use the size tool on these decals. So I'll increase that up. It's kind of just like creating a big shadow, if you will. Um, and so now we're starting to get a little bit of realism in this. Let's take a look back and use this eyedropper tool and select this and see if we can't mess around with this, if you will. We're gonna tint this a little bit. I wanna get a little more depth in there, maybe a darker color. Now we're starting to really see things. And so this is a nice segue into the next video, which is we're gonna be looking at all the weather and lighting tools to get the scene to look where we want it um, because I want to establish lighting before I go any further so that I have a better understanding of how it um, how these tools interact with um, what is going to be my final shot um, so there we go that's the end of this video appreciate it as always please subscribe